This is not Exit Light, and this is not my podcast. (laughs) (laughs) Um, So, obviously, I am Jory, the usual co-host of the podcast, Uh, but today we're doing things a little bit differently. I will be hosting the podcast today. Hey, Madison. Hey. You're moving your phone around quite a bit. I'm um, actually, it's not, it's, it's pretty flat. I get a lot of like interference on your end. Like you okay. Are. Okay. I'll work on that. Yeah. You better work on that. Oh, you better watch your tone. Okay. Anyways. So, uh, I would normally be the co-host, but today I'm hosting as exit light and the exit light family are on a road trip. And those of us who are not on the road trip are holding down the fort. So with me today is producer Jeremy and returning for a second time is my little sister, Madison. Hello, Madison. Hello, Jory. <clears throat> How are things? So things are awesome. Um, uh, first and foremost, Happy New Year to everybody. Um, but uh, yeah, we started off the new year uh, on the train towards the year of the bean. Our baby the boy on the way. How exciting. The year of the bean. Bring <laughs> him into the exit light family. That's uh, fun. How things uh, been with you since the last podcast you did with mom? Things have been good. Just busy working and taking care of the kids and just spending time with the family. Just busy, busy. Awesome. Yeah. So the original plan for everybody listening today was that um, the last podcast Exit Light and Rob did was a year in review of all the podcasts that we've done last year. Well, we were going to do another year in review where it was my take on the podcast from last year with you guys, but with Exit Light not feeling well and her being on the Exit Light family road trip, uh, plans changed. Madison and I got kind of thrown together as a last minute option, and we're just kind of... We're going to start off with, yeah, we're going to start off with a topic (laughs) and uh, we'll try to keep to it. If not, you're just going to have to be entertained by our wacky nonsense, I suppose. (laughs) It'll be good. We'll be, we'll do, we'll try to do good. We'll, we'll try our best. And I'm sure producer Jeremy with his cattle prod will keep us in line. (laughs) Um, How's the sound on my end? Does, Does it still sound like I'm like moving? Uh, it's a lot better than it was okay. when we started. Okay, good. I don't know what happened there. I'm sorry. It's okay. Just don't do it again. Huh. Okay. We'll see. So, today's topic is uh, Madison and I and our siblings growing up in kind of like a paranormal, uh, crazy, rich family. And... I know that I have talked a lot about my experiences growing up, but Madison really hasn't talked about any of her experiences. And so I figure we would just bounce back and forth uh, things that have happened to us within the family. Um, Same thing with like Maya or Josh Uh, and just kind of uh, go over those. And if we stray, then we might stray in the serial killers or lost in the woods or um, how the Cowboys suck. Uh, oh yeah. Whatever. We have to talk about that. <laughs> <laughs> Any chance I get to talk about how bad I don't like the Cowboys, I will take it. And for anybody listening who likes the Cowboys, um, don't unsubscribe. This is not endorsed by Exit Light herself. It is not. Uh, yeah. She doesn't even know this is happening. She knows this is <laughs> happening, just not the hatred for the Cowboys. So <laughs> don't judge the exit light channel based off of that yeah yeah so with that um i guess we'll start with you madison and maybe what your earliest memory of having a paranormal experience is i remember my very first paranormal experience and it was very very shortly after we moved into the house in casa grande um where we where me and maya were still in what ended up being Maya and Josh's room. And I was laying there in bed one night and it was, I mean, we hadn't lived there maybe 
two, two weeks, I think. And so I was, I can't remember how old I was at that point, seven. And I was laying in Maya's bed and your room was a direct, was directly across the hall and the door was open and you were watching, uh, wrestling in your room and something came up next to me and started breathing down my neck and into my ear. Uh, and I called you out of the room and I said, Jory, some things, some things in this room and I can, I can feel it. And you said, it's not a big deal. Cause I, I was trying to get to sleep and you said, go back to bed. It's not a big deal. And I said, okay, well, I could still hear it. Um, and it was just, it was close and it sounded like it was just breathing right into my ear and I could feel it on my neck. And so I asked you to keep the door open while I fell asleep and you said, yeah. And eventually I fell asleep, but those were the very first things that things like that started happening to me in the house. Almost immediately after we moved in, I just had the creepy breathing down my neck type feelings at first. Um, but then, of course, you know, after time, they just progressively, you know, I mean, I think we all had experiences in that house that just it got more and more uh, prominent, I suppose. Right. What, was, what was your experience, your first experience in the house? In the house in Casa Grande? In Casa Grande. Um, You know, there were so many, it's kind of hard to say what was the first one. Um, <clears throat> first, I do want to say that retrospectively, thinking back on it, I feel bad that I just nonchalantly dismissed your <laughs> your something breathing heavily on you. Oh, it's not. <laughs> no. I mean, it's not a big deal. I think you were just trying well, to, I think you were trying to not make it a big deal. So I wouldn't think it was a big deal. I think it was just trying to I think more, that more was of like kind a, of like a uh, I think that was part of it, but I think it was just kind of like a big brother being annoyed by a little sister while I'm trying to watch wrestling. Oh, I'm sure kind of a deal. I'm, yeah. Um but you know But it was one of those like I had never had any that was my first paranormal experience at all ever that I remember. And so it was more of those like when you hear it you can't move type things yeah. right um and in, and instantly i was like i don't i don't want to be here yeah i um i think with me it just started i think it started with hearing voices downstairs when i would be on the computer um, oh yeah i used to be a late night uh owl and mm -hmm. stay up till two three o'clock in the morning online illegally downloading music and <laughs> being on AOL Instant Messenger. Um, you rebel. And I would hear people talking downstairs. And the way, so we would have, like, we had a loft. And you'd go downstairs. And then downstairs, immediately, once you get off the stairs, would be the kitchen. To your right would be, uh, I guess like a dining room, sitting room combo. Mm -hmm. And we also had uh, the laundry room and the bathroom, the downstairs bathroom. And it sounded like the voices were coming from the downstairs bathroom. Oh, geez. But I always thought that it was probably like white noise coming from the random moments that the toilet would make sound. Right. Uh, but when you constantly hear it all the time, you kind of get to the point where you're like, that's definitely not. Right. Yeah. You can start water, to tell. White noise. Yeah. <laughs> right. Yeah. yeah. And so uh, uh, I think that was probably the first encounters I started having with the paranormal in that house was just the random voices I would hear. Now you had some encounters when you lived in Spokane, right? Yeah. So, well, yeah, I had encounters in every house I lived in in Spokane. Uh -huh. um, so for those listening, I kind of grew up a little bit differently compared to the rest of my siblings. You moving your microphone around, sister? Sorry, I'm trying to adjust the volume. Okay. 
Um, so my mom was a lot younger when she had me compared to when she had my siblings. So our lifestyle growing up was a little different. And so we kind of moved around a lot. And there was a few times where her and big surprise, my uncle Mike, were messing <laughs> around with Ouija boards and stuff like that. So it always put me kind of at the crosshairs of weird phenomena. Um, the ha- main house that we lived in in Spokane, the house that um, you and Maya were, I don't want to say born in, but we were living in it when you were, two were born. Right. Um, our, the house had been around at that time, probably 50 years, give Mm -hmm. or take. I believe the previous owner had passed away in it. Oh, in the house? I believe so. Oh, I guess I never knew that. Um, And so I was never, like, I was always afraid to be in the house when the house was dark. I always had to have a light on, but the basement, the basement was always the creepiest part of the house. Mm -hmm. 24-7. It could be summertime. The hottest part of summer, and you could go in the basement, and it's freezing freaking cold. Mm. Um, And I had a lot of experiences in that uh, house. Um, I can't actually remember seeing anything physical. I do remember, like, a lot of the times I'd hear heavy breathing around me. Mm -hmm. Uncle Mike saw a physical being in that house that scared the holy daylights out of him. (laughs) Was that the one that he saw down in the basement? He, uh, at one point in time, he lived with us in that basement with his then wife and he woke up to a figure. I don't know if they were, it was standing over them or if it was floating over them, oh. but there was a figure there looking down at them. And that dude fully left his wife in the basement and took off. <gasps> the stairs. Oh my gosh. Yeah. Mike. Yeah. Oh no, <laughs> I did. I did see that was, um, that was the same room that, um, Myself and uh, our uncle Jeremiah, um, we were, I I can't remember what he was there for, if he was visiting or if he was living with us, but Mm -hmm. we were in my room and we were talking and they had the lights off and there was a great figure that appeared at the door, which I thought was uh, uh, JD, our dad. That's right. And he made you go turn on the lights. And he was too afraid to get out of the bed. Now, mind you, my uncle Jeremiah is probably four years older than me, give or take. And he refused to get out of bed. I had to get out of bed and turn on the light. <laughs> oh, that's funny. Um, yeah. And then, like, my grandma's two-story house, uh, she lived out in the forest, in the woods. And, I mean, there was a small community there, but it, this was basically BFE. And the she had lived on that property my entire life. It started off as a trailer, and then they moved the trailer, and they built a two-story house. But for some reason, the basement always gave me the heebie-jeebies, no matter what. Even if there were people down there, I had hmm. a hard time being down there. And Mike lived down there for a while, so I'm assuming that's probably why. I'm sure. <laughs> yeah. God knows what he gets into and what he brings with him. <laughs> right. Yeah. And um, mom had a boyfriend that lived not very far away from from uh, grandma. And um, that house was haunted. And Mike would do a lot of Ouija board seances there as well. And that was the house that I supposedly became possessed in numerous times. Mm-hmm. And um, I don't have any memory of that, but I do remember um, my mom would put on these storybook tapes, like Disney, like Peter Pan. And while they were on, I could feel like somebody was in the room watching me and I could hear breathing and it took me a long time to fall asleep. Um, I do remember that specifically. I think I even had a, to the point where I had a small cot set up in her room because I couldn't sleep in my room and I would fall asleep in the cot and then they would move me to my room in the basement. Oh, your room was in the basement. Yeah. I think we're seeing a pattern here. Uh, yeah, <laughs> <laughs> you can say that. Gosh. Yeah. So like a lot of the different places that we shuffled through and lived in, um, uh, we, there was always something crazing going on and it seemed right. to us down in Arizona. 
Um, and it started interacting with you and Maya and Josh and eventually yeah. even got to, it even got JD to notice. So, well, we, when we moved from that house and we moved to Texas, we lived in an apartment complex and directly when you first walk into this apartment complex directly to the right was our, um, living room area. Then you keep going and you have our dining room area and to the, to the right of that was the kitchen. Now, to the left was a hallway, and when the hallway first started, there was Maya and Josh's room. You keep going down the hallway, and there's a bathroom, and it led to Mom's room. And it broke off, so the whole apartment kind of looked like a horseshoe shape. And Mm -hmm. at the very very end was my room. Mm -hmm. Um, And we started having weird things happen there immediately. I mean, we had the, the situation where Mom... I I remember this specifically. We were watching the speech that Barack Obama gave when he was announcing that we had killed um, Osama bin Laden. Mm -hmm. And he was on TV and he was at his podium and he was talking about the seals and everything. And mom was wearing a real thick um, gray sweatshirt. And she was wearing a t-shirt underneath it. And she said, I am burning. And... I said, what, what do you mean? You know, what do you mean burning? And she said, my side, um, like directly under her armpit, uh, she said, it's just burning. And I said, okay, well lift up, lift, lift up your sweater and let me, let me see. And she had three distinct marks that went horizontally, um, across her, across her, uh, abdomen or I, the, her side and they were very sharp. It wasn't something that looked like, um, fingernails, like a regular set of fingernails would have done. Cause those are thick. Um, but these were very fine points, like needle looking marks. And then as I told her to get up and go look at them, she had another three go directly across those and make an X and they started bleeding. And uh, so that was one of the first things that I remember happening. Is Jory, is it better? Yeah, you're good. Okay. Um, that's one of the first things that I remember happening. Or we were all sitting down at our dining room table and we were playing marbles. And mom went to go roll her dice. And this something, this little, like it looked like a little black cloud went over the marble board and it went over her hand and uh, cut her on her hands. And I remember, I remember shortly after that, she, she, she knew somebody who gave her these miniature crosses that were dipped in holy water Uh and she put them up around the house and she outlined the doors in the windowsills with uh, salt. And I remember a couple, a couple apartments down, our neighbors and we thought this was strange for the longest time because we hadn't we hadn't done the salt yet, but they had salt outside of their windows and their doors, and we thought, well, that's that's weird. You know, I, I had never seen anything like that, and so shortly afterward, we were like, hey, you know, maybe we should try this. And dad had a couple instances where we, we, uh, we used to have a family friend that would come over her and her husband and their family would come over every weekend, uh, every Friday and Saturday. And they would come over and we would do dinner and we'd play marbles and games and stuff like that. And they had a a daughter and she was about, about Josh's age. Um, and it was getting late at night one night and they put them in Joshua and Maya's bedroom, which is is directly next to, at at that time, which was our dining area. Mm -hmm. And dad said that he thought he heard something. And so he was going to go open the door to tell them to go to bed. And he went to go open the door and something on the other side was holding the door shut. He said he couldn't turn the doorknob and the doors didn't have locks. Um, So he said he couldn't turn the doorknob And he felt like there was somebody on the other end pushing the door because he could get it open about half an inch to an inch and then it would just slam back. And he thought, well, 
obviously it's not to seven year old children because they're not going to be able to hold the door that shut. And so finally, whatever it was, let go. And dad was able to open the door and both the kids were asleep. And I remember that freaked him out really bad because dad, you know, doesn't really have a lot of experiences. Um, and was a real big skeptic for a very long time. And so he was like, he was dead set. He would knew something was behind that door and Mm -hmm. keeping it closed. Um, yeah, yeah. That would freak me out. And I've, I've been a believer my entire life. (laughs) Yeah, exactly. Well, and dad's like, I know nobody broke in because their, their bedroom had an outside window. And he's like, at first I thought maybe somebody was in the room. Um, he said, but surely, you know, we would have heard somebody coming in and he said, I walked in there and he said, they were both asleep. Like nothing had ever happened. And he said, I kept yelling at them to open the door, open the door. And he said, and they were just asleep And that house. That apartment was just the feel in there alone was really weird. And the one room that eventually nobody ended up going into because it was my and Josh's room and Eventually, nobody ended up sleeping in there uh, because it was just so creepy was Maya and Josh's room. You could walk in there in the middle of the day and just you just got that weird get out type feeling. Um, And I remember there was there was one night where I had gotten out of bed (sighs) sometime in the middle of the night and I went out and I got myself a bowl of cereal. And the way that our living room was set up is that our TV, and I believe we had the entertainment center at the time, um, was set up on the back wall of the living room. So we had the L-shaped couch like we have now, that red one. Mm -hmm. And then we had dad's recliner. And dad's recliner was positioned in a spot where you could see the bathroom in the reflection of the TV. Mm -hmm. And I got up and I turned the light onto the bathroom and I sat in the living room and I didn't have any other lights on and I was eating my cereal because I guess I was hungry. And I saw something in the shadow of the TV walk past the bathroom and then the bathroom door slowly started shutting. And that scared the hell out of me. I don't think I've ever flown out of a chair and gone back to my room so quickly. And what what really scared me is I have to pass the bathroom to get to my bedroom. So I was in like a dead sprint. I must have been 15, 16 years old. Mm -hmm. And so when I was telling, I ended up telling Maya about it. And Maya said, yeah, she said, I've had weird things happen in that chair. And she says, I have weird things about the bathroom. Um, and one, one day she was, um, she was there and I, I think it was her friend that she had at the time. She was laying in dad's recliner and she was sleeping. And she said something came up to her behind the recliner and pushed it down. Like she was going to fall backward. Mm -hmm. And, it scared her so badly that whenever she came over, she would refuse to even sit in the chair anymore. Right. So I don't know what it was about that spot specifically. And I don't know, but would that chair ended up becoming, we just didn't, we just didn't. Um, and we had, we had weird, weird things happen. I had a one time where me and Maya were, I want to say we were unloading groceries or something something like that playing marbles or whatever, but there was, um, there was nobody in the house. It was just me and Maya. And I went to go do something and I, the TV in mom's bedroom turned on and it was, it turned on and it was full blast. And I, I don't, I don't know why I thought it was Josh, but Josh wasn't there. And I went into the hallway and I was like, Josh, and I'm yelling. I'm like, turn the TV down. Uh, Like, turn the TV down. And I get in there and there's nobody in the room. Nobody in the room. And specifically, I remember this, but (laughs) it had turned on the SpongeBob. 
And it was one of the scenes where the Flying Dutchman was on. And when the TV turned on, the Flying Dutchman, he said, I told you this place was haunted. Oh, and, dang. Yeah. And it was blaring and blaring. And Maya said, the, like, the look on your face when you got into the bedroom and realized that nobody was in there. She said, you just turned white. Um, so that's when things first started kind of happening for me. And then we moved into the uh, place where they're currently at. And that, that, uh, that house, I, I won't stay there alone. The one of the last times that mom and the family went on a, a trip, I, th I think it was a new year's trip. They went out and did something for new year's with dad. Um, and they had to go to either like San Antonio or Austin or one of those places. And she asked me if I would go to the house and house sit the dogs for her. And I told her I wouldn't stay there alone, that if I was going to watch the dogs that I'd have to, because it was Bella and Maggie at the time, and it wasn't Maggie and Julie, um, that I would have to watch them at my apartment because I wouldn't stay there alone. Mm -hmm. Because I'd had so many weird things happen to me in that apartment um, that I, I, I won't go in there if there's nobody there. And there was one, one time... I say recently, I can't remember how long ago it was, a year, two. Um, I had gone into that house and I had had a really very creepy experience. And because mom had been telling me that she was, she had been there alone. I, I can't remember if maybe the kids went to go visit. I think it's, that's what happened. Both of the kids went to go visit dad. And she had said that she had been hearing these weird noises like, um, banging on a cookie sheet. But they were consistently three bangs. And she said they sounded like they were coming from her room. And she would call me sometimes and she'd say like, hey, there's some weird stuff going on. And I'd tell her, I was like, well, if it gets too weird, call me over and I'll come stay with you. Well, some, I had gone out to dinner with them one night and they had to stop at the store and they said, we'll just go home to, to her house because I was going to stay with them. And I said, okay, well, I'll go and, and get a shower and stuff and get ready for bed. And uh, I'd walked in the house and mom turns all the lights off in her house. Uh, or she, well, she used to. So I walked in and it was just pitch black. And I thought, okay, well, um, Maggie, she's deaf. And so she doesn't see me come in and I'm walking my way through the house and I'm turning on the lights and I hear like a, a doorknob um, jingle in the back of the house. And instead of picking up the dogs and getting out of the house, I thought, oh, you know, let's go look like an idiot. So I'm flicking on all the lights and the specific bedroom that I'm going to in the back of the house you have to go in and you have to reach around the door to turn on the light. So uh, this room is completely pitch black. And I walk my way in and I get just directly past the door. And I go to turn around and I hear one of those bangs. And it sounds like it's on a, on a cookie sheet. Mm -hmm. And I thought, well this must be one of the noises that mom's telling me about. And so I'm, I'm, I'm not, instantly, I'm not going to go to, Oh, something creepy is going on here. I'm trying to debunk it. Okay. Maybe it's the air conditioning or something. Um, maybe something's banging in there or going off and I'm like, okay, but mom said they always go in threes. So when she says they're consistent, they're like a one, two, three, but I hear my first one and it stops. And I thought, okay, well, that's weird. And I hear a second one. And I thought, okay, so obviously there's going to be a third one, but they're spaced out. They're not in the pattern that mom's been telling me they've been in. And I go to turn on the light and the third one comes, but it's not just one knock. It is, there's banging coming from every direction. I can't tell where it's at, which is how I know it's not the air conditioning because the air conditioning vent is on one side of this room. Mm -hmm. um, 
So it's coming from everywhere. It sounds like it's directly in front of me, on the sides, right behind me, all over this room. And it's just bang, 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 bang. And the door behind me just slams shut as hard as it can. And at that point, I don't remember getting outside of the apartment. I remember the door slamming. And then next thing I know, I'm outside and I'm calling mom. And I said, mom, when are you going to be home? And she's like, we're on our way home from the store. Uh, she can tell something's wrong because I'm crying. And she says, what's going on? And I was like, I can't go back into the house until you come home. And she said, okay. So we got home. I told her what happened and everything. And she's like, I told you I was hearing these noises. And I was like, I don't know what noise you were hearing, but it, cl it clearly was not the same noise. It's what just happened to me and whatever it was was smart enough to lure me into that room. It was smart enough to make noises to get my attention, to get me to go in there. And so that, that apartment, I won't go into mom or into that bedroom anymore. I won't go into the bathroom that's connected to that bedroom. Um, because mom's had some really weird things happen to her in there as well. Um, and I won't stay in that house alone. I just, I absolutely will not do it. And the room that Maya is staying in, or the room that Maya was staying in in that apartment, um, that room for some reason also gives me the creeps. I don't know what it is, but that room just makes me feel really, really, really uneasy. And Maya She'll go in there and she'll sleep in there and it'll be pitch dark and she'll just sleep in there by herself. And she is brave because I had been in there once um, and I don't know where Maya was, but I was with mom. She might've, she might've been with dad or something. And I had brought my dog over and I was in there and I was watching a movie and Maya had a chair sitting in the room and Dahlia had hopped off the bed and she was just growling at this chair that didn't have anybody in it. Um, and she would just sit in front of the chair and just stare at it. And then if something happened, she would bark or she would growl, but she never left from watching that chair the entire time we were in the room. And so I eventually, when I moved out and when I started um, living on my own, I had a couple weird things here and there happen to me. Like I had moved in uh, with a couple roommates and we had some, I mean, we had some minor things happen. We were, were, we would leave things in a certain place and then we'd come back and they weren't there um, and they were moved. Um, but nothing beyond that really happened until I moved into another apartment and I lived by myself. Um, and I never lived by myself. And at this point, I I'm already, like, I was already kind of iffy. Um, and it was a, a an efficiency-style apartment. So when you walk in, it's, it's an open concept. You have my dining room and my living room. Or, I'm sorry, my dining room and my kitchen. To the right is my living room. And then in the back, it breaks off into a closet. And then there's a shower. It's real small. And I had a... a uh, like a, in my closet, there was this patch of the ceiling that was like a square that people could get up into the attic and stuff. And I never really thought anything of it until there was one day that I was, I had used my curling, no, not my curling iron, my iron. I was ironing my work clothes and I sat my iron on the edge of the ironing board and I went into the bathroom and I was doing my hair and my makeup and the iron uh, fell over. Mm -hmm. And I thought, well, that's weird. But, you know, maybe I just set it too close to the edge or something and then it just slipped off. Whatever. Not a big deal. So I unplugged the iron. I let it cool down. I put it in my closet. Well, there was one day where I was sleeping um, in my living room area. And I had woken up. And my iron was moved out of my closet 
and it was sitting on a glass table that I had and it was plugged in. But, but when I got to it, it hadn't even gotten hot yet. It was to the point where you could still touch it. Mm -hmm. Like it had just, just gotten there. Yeah. And that made me really nervous. So I called mom and I said, Hey, these things are happening. Dahlia would do this weird thing where she would follow something in there and it would lead her all across the apartment. She basically did like a, uh, like a run around through my entire apartment. She'd go through every corner and she'd go through every room and she would just follow something until eventually she got to where she started and she stopped. And so I, I, I called mom and I told her about the iron situation and she said, well, do you have anything in your apartment that anybody can get in through? And so I told her about this spot in the, in the, in the closet. And she said, well, attach something to it that if it moves, it'll make noise. So I bought these little Christmas jingle bell things and I tied them together on a string and I hung them from this, uh, from this little board in the ceiling and nothing, nothing ever happened with those, but I was still having weird things happen to me in the apartment. So I went and I bought sage cause we have a local, uh, natural grocery store. It's called natural grocers and mm -hmm. they sold, they sold sage. So I went and I saged the house and did my little thing. And I never had anything happen. Anything weird happened to me after that. When we, I moved out of that apartment when I met Cody, when we moved in together and then we moved into a house and then we moved a year later into the house that we're currently in. And I still haven't, except the only weird thing that's happened to me here is the night that we moved in. Um, I was in the, I was in my bedroom and I was putting stuff away and Cody said, Hey, I'm going to go out to the living room and grab something. And I said, okay, well, it sounded to me like Cody was calling my name, but he was angry and he was like, Madison, Madison. And so I got out of the bedroom and I went into the living room and I said, what? And he looked at me and he said, what? And I said, were you not, you know, were you not just calling my name? And he said, well, no. And I said, okay, weird. And then this last time that he was home, I was in the shower and he was in the bedroom and he said to me, he said, what? And I, I said, what? And he came into the bathroom. And he goes, what do you need? I said, I wasn't, you know, I wasn't calling you. And he said, no, I'm positive. I heard you. <laughs> And, uh, I said, no, I wasn't saying anything, but those are the only two weird things that we've had happen in this house so far. But in the last house that we lived in, nothing ever happened. It's like whatever was going on with me stopped at that apartment that I moved out of two years ago. I just haven't had anything weird happen to me since. Maybe that's all it took with some sage in. Maybe. Maybe I don't, I don't know, but it just didn't ever, didn't ever follow me. I stayed in uh, both of those apartments that um, you guys lived in. One of right. them uh, mm -hmm. still currently lives in. And um, the first apartment, I had to stay in your room. Okay. And I never had anything actually happen to me in that apartment, but it was definitely creepy, and I never fell asleep um, without some sort of a light on. Right. I mostly would just leave the TV on and go to sleep. Mom um, would have some the, weird. Mom would have some weird things happen in in that bedroom specifically because she had a, a bathroom that was connected to it. Right. And she and she said that she had a couple instances where the the faucet in the bathroom would turn on. Yeah, and I it remember wasn't, her saying that. Yeah, and it wasn't just like a drip. Oh, it's kind of leaky. She said that it was like full blast. Somebody had to go in there and turn it on. Yeah. Yeah, it was definitely like a creepy vibe. Yeah. Um, I didn't get it through the whole apartment. I just remember 
sleeping in your bedroom and leaving a light on because it kind of felt like I was being watched. Which is really weird because to me, I felt like my bedroom was the least creepy area of the house. Um, or like the the safest area of the house, which is ironic because we ended up, or the apartment, because we ended up having somebody break into that window and come into the apartment through my bedroom. So, but like paranormal wise, I never had anything happen to me in that room. Nothing. Maybe he was just curious about me because I didn't live there. Maybe. I mean, um, maybe. Yeah. Yeah. Um, and then just this past summer, um, well, I've been to the apartment before, but this right. past summer I actually stayed there and we stayed in what was Maya's room. Ugh. Mm-mm. Um, and I can remember the first day my wife and I pulled up, you were in the apartment by yourself, which I thought was weird because you weren't outside to greet me or Kendra. <laughs> oh, oh, no, I, I thought you meant I was there by myself. I was like, no, no, I you were in not. the apartment by yourself. Oh, okay. I Everybody see. else was outside. I wonder, there was a reason I didn't go outside. I was talking, I- you were texting on your phone when I walked in. I think but, I was. Um, I think I was on the phone. I can't remember why. I can't remember. That's not the point. So we got there, and then uh, not too long after, Maya and Jeremy showed up, mm-hmm. and we were all just kind of sitting down, talking and catching up, and you know, doing what families do when they haven't seen each other in a long time. Right. And I was sitting on a foldable chair next to dad and we were both sitting next to mom's room i remember that yep and everybody was talking and i just stopped talking and i just kind of zoned out because i could feel Mm -hmm. something weird yeah because i remember we asked you were like you're okay because you completely just you went into like a dead stare yeah You, you stopped talking and you just zoned out and we were like are you okay no, yeah. yeah, it just, you said something just feels weird. Yeah, I could just, there was a a, a change in the environment. Mm-hmm. And I felt it instantly. And well, you've that's always why I had, just zoned out. You've always had that, though, where you can sense when something's off. Or, you know, you, you'll walk into somewhere and you'll say, well, this is weird. This is, it feels different. Well... You know, it's funny you say that because um, very recently there was this day, uh, and I apologize for everybody listening. I don't remember all the details because my memory is shit. But I was feeling super anxious. Mm-hmm. And Kendra and I went to a, the grocery store, and we were grocery shopping, and the entire time I was in there, I was just so... Is this the day that you called mom? <sighs> I remember talking to mom. Mom said that there was recently a day where you called her and you said, I have this feeling. Are you okay? No, it was actually Kendra. Um, Oh, okay. Kendra randomly just was like, you need to call your mom. And I was like, why? And she was like, have you talked to your mom today? And I was like, well, as a matter of fact, I've called her twice today. Right. And she was like, I feel like you need to call your mom right now. And I was like, well, I've already talked to her twice. Why don't you call my mom right now? <laughs> <laughs> so she called my mom, uh, Exit Light. And um, she was like, I'm sorry to bother you. I just feel like I have to talk to you right now. I have to feel it. And I just feel like I need to make sure you're okay. And mom was like, I'm okay. I, was yeah. that the same day that I was feeling like crazy anxious? Was that Was that it? Yeah, so she got this overwhelming feeling like she needed to, like she needed to make sure mom was okay, and it was actually the same day huh. that, um, for a period of time, I remember specifically it was at the grocery store, but even before the grocery store, I just felt um, uneasy. I've, I've told everybody listening before, but I always get these weird cold chills that start at the base of my spine and work its way up my back to my neck. And it was that repeatedly over and over and over and over and over again. And um, I felt like I was just completely surrounded by people. 
and I just felt like I had to get out of whatever it was I was in, but I wasn't in anything. I mean, I was in a grocery store and I'm not, I have claustrophobia, but not in a grocery store because I right. work in them all day. Right. So I'm like, I just couldn't figure out what the hell was wrong with me. And then later that night, Kendra suddenly was like, I need to talk to your mom. We need to talk to your mom. We need to talk to your mom. So I don't know if maybe I was feeling what Kendra was feeling. Maybe. In a, a way, shape or form. Right. Um, but yeah, I, I just, I ha I just have this, I want to say it's ability, but I just, I more can like just a sixth feel things. Sense. Yeah. Yeah. And that's what I was going through at the apartment was just, you know, it was a warm, inviting apartment and we were all having a good time and talking and I was physically meeting Jeremy for the first time and, mm -hmm. and, uh, it just changed into, um, uh, something creepy. It was just a creepy middle of cemetery in the dark vibe. Yeah, you you definitely looked like something was something was going on. Yeah, and uh, it was weird because it was really the only other, really the only weird thing that happened to me because Kendra and I had to sleep in Maya's room, and uh, nothing happened to us in that room. Um, and I never really got too much of a vibe from it. Um, it was I won't, just mom's room. Right. When I, when I stay in mom's apartment, I don't stay in that back room, um, at all. And yeah. if I, if I do that, I have to, <laughs> I have to leave the lights on and I have to keep the door open. And right. there's been a couple times where I've, where I have, and mom has eventually shut the door in that room and I've had like panic attacks. Like, I won't be in that room alone. It's the same way with Maya's room. If I sleep in that room, I have to sleep with the door open. I can, uh, I even took a nap in there by myself. It was me and JD and Josh were the only ones home. And the girls went out and had a girls' day. Um, and so... Uh -uh. Uh, one, I, even... I think someone took a nap in the main bedroom, and then someone took a nap in the living room, and then I took a nap in that bedroom. And... I did have a hard time actually trying to take a nap, but um, other than that, I I was even by myself in there at one point. I still I even did the uh, New Orleans podcast in there um, to separate myself from mom, so there wasn't an right. uh, echo. Yeah, I when I was just over there for Christmas, and uh, I took a nap in that room, and I kept the door open. I didn't. I I I'm the kind of person who can't sleep if there's um too much noise like i can't fall asleep during movies um i can't fall asleep with the tv on um mm -hmm. just for the noise but when i go to bed at night i do leave the tv on but i turn the volume down to where i can barely hear it because i can't fall asleep to no noise but i can't fall asleep to noise either i have to have just something small in the background um, okay. but when i'm at mom's house i don't care what's what's going on I will sleep in the bedrooms with the door opens with with the doors open with all of the noise in the world so I can fall asleep because I yeah. won't I won't fall asleep alone in any of the bedrooms in that house. Right. And mom said that they just recently took cuz they have that doorbell you know mm -hmm. uh, uh, the ring doorbell. That, yeah, the ring doorbell. Mhm. Mm and she said that she recently uh took it down to charge it. Dad dad went to charge it and it gives her notifications when there's movement outside of her door mm -hmm. and it'll text, it'll text her and dad and it'll say, Hey, we detected movement, blah, 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 blah. And then it records. Mm -hmm. yeah. Well, they went and they set it down back in that front room by the kitchen. Mm -hmm. And mom was saying that she was getting alerts on her phone, that they were getting, um, movement, movement in front of the camera. And mom's had a lot of weird things happen to her, uh, like in that kitchen area weird things will happen and the dogs will go in there and they'll bark or they'll growl. Um, oh, but at night when, you know, when all the lights are out and stuff. And so she says that she's had weird things happen with her there, but she's also had weird things happen to her in that bathroom. Um, she'll take a shower and she says that she hears a, a lot of the times someone will call, call for, for mom. She'll say she'll hear a little boy and they'll say, mom, mom. Um, in the uh, the hallway in the bathroom? Or no, in no, no, in, in her bathroom. Oh, okay, yeah. Um, 
or she said that she's taken showers before and she's had something press up against the shower curtain and like force her into the back wall of the shower. I mean, so, and there's been times where I've been, when I lived there, I'd, I'd be in that room and she'd be showering and she'd say, what do you need? And it, it was like the same situation with me and Cody. And I'll say, I wasn't, I wasn't calling you. Yeah. She'll say, okay, well, I heard somebody yell for mom. And I was like, it wasn't, yeah. wasn't me. That's but, crazy. Yeah. Just, there's just a lot of weird, weird things that happen. And I'm surprised. Cause when, you know, when mom, where, where was she? The week that Cody and I went to the, the Dallas Seahawks game. Mm-hmm. Mom had gone to a tournament for Josh and um, Sydney. Was that the one in Houston? Uh, yes, that was the one in Houston. Okay. Well, we had somebody come over. She had somebody come over and watch the dogs in the apartment that first Friday that she was gone. Right. Um, and then she came over to my house and she watched her dogs and then my puppy at my house. And she never said that she had anything weird happen in the apartment. Nothing, nothing out of the ordinary, I guess. But I was nervous for her, for her to have to stay there alone because <laughs> uh, I was like, uh, no. Yeah. And so I, when, when mom asked me to watch her dogs for her trip this time, um, I said, yeah, well, I'll go over there and let them out and stuff. And she was like, no, dad will bring them to you. I thought that's. Probably, That's probably, probably for the best. best. Yeah, I there was there was one time where I had to go and pick up the dogs. It was in the middle of the day, and I was in the apartment alone going to pick up the dogs. And even then, I was like, I have got to go swoop these dogs up, get out. Yeah, like yeah. I was not going to spend any unnecessary time in that apartment that I had to. Right. So, but mom, mom sometimes says that when she's on the phone with me. This happened to me two times in the house that I lived in before here, but she says that she, when I, when I would talk, she would say, did you hear that? And I would say no. And she said something on your end of the phone was a deep male voice. And it would always be when we were hanging up the phone and I'd say, okay, I love you. I'd say, I love you. And I'd hang up the phone and she called me back and she said, did you hear it? I'd say no, and she said something on the other line, and a deep male voice said, I love you too. And so in that apartment, like I said, nothing weird ever, I'm not in that house, I mean, nothing weird ever happened to me in that house. Mm -hmm. Um, But she would say, you know, I can hear somebody on the other line, I can hear somebody on the other line, and I'm like, there's no, there's nobody here. And she was like, nope, something is there. I'm like okay, cool, thanks. Mm, I don't know because I've I uh, I specifically remember listening on a podcast of moms where I heard a little boy talk to her live on the podcast. She apparently has had a couple of those. <laughs> yeah, and I had to text. I texted. I know. I think I was Maya right away, and I'm like, holy crap! I just heard a little boy. Yeah. Uh, on the podcast, and sure enough, they were able to. Uh, go back and find the voice of this little boy uh, trying to say said something like mama or it was trying to get her attention which is so weird because she says that happens she can hear that all the time that something is saying mom yeah or or calling out for her and I don't I don't know what it would be I don't know yeah yeah so but there's just been a lot of a lot of weirds and I think that mom gets a lot of it and a lot of the weird things that happen are they happen to mom right because you know I have I mean I have stories from everybody and I have a few of my own stories and things like that but mom seems to really get the more um Phys- physical things, I suppose. Mm-hmm. She says that sometimes when she's asleep, uh, things will grab at her feet and yank her on the bed. Yeah. Um, 
And, you know, like I said, of course, with her scratches and her, what you know, whatever else. And, you know, she had that story when she was younger. She had that burnt handprint on her back. And I, I or she had something push her down the stairs once. Um, and so I just, I don't, I don't know what it is, but it seems like it really f- focuses around her a lot. Well, I know that she messed around with the Ouija board when she was a kid mm-hmm. uh, quite a bit. And that's part of the reason why she, she's told the story on the podcast before. And oh, okay. The handprint on her, on her back. Right. Um, so, uh, I, I, I mean, it would be nice to be able to just look, take a peek behind the veil and see what goes on on the other side. So we could right. offer explanations for what, what is what. Exactly. Um, so I don't, I don't, understand. it could be mom's tampering with those sort of things that have just kind of attached itself to her. And in a way it's attached itself to us. Um, Maybe. Cause I know when I moved out, uh, into my first living situation uh-huh. with my now wife, uh, the hauntings didn't stop and she became a victim of the hauntings herself. Um, right. Yeah, I remember you saying that there was a, quite a few. Even Nick had some weird things, didn't he? Well, when so we moved into an apartment when I moved out of the two story house here uh-huh. in Casa Grande. Right. Um, and this apartment was actually the apartment that we lived in prior to the two story house being built because our dad was building it. So we right. Lived this, we lived in an apartment. Well, years and years later, I move out of that two-story house right back into the same apartment. As a matter of fact, right across the way from the old apartment. We I was going to say, that, wow. That apartment was haunted. Hmm. And so this apartment we moved in, and I had I remember walking, doing the tour with the lady, and I remember walking and telling Kendra, yeah, when we lived here, this place was haunted. And Kendra was like, are you sure you want to live here? And I'm like, well, I'm sure ours will be fine. Right. <laughs> Yeah, and uh, she ended up seeing my doppelganger, which is a common theme in our family as well. Seeing right. doppelgangers, and I, I've told the story of seeing Josh's doppelganger, and Mom has seen my doppelganger, and Kendra saw my doppelganger. She was sleeping on, well, she wasn't sleeping on the couch. We had had a fight, and I was sleeping because I had to go to work, and she was in the living room teaching me a lesson, <laughs> <laughs> and. That's she saw me come out of the bedroom, and so she was like, I'm just going to sit here, and I'm going to be pouty, and maybe he'll come over and apologize to me. And I had walked out of the bedroom, walked into the uh, hallway bathroom, but I never turned the light on. And when Kendra kind of looked around to investigate, she noticed that I was nowhere to be seen. And that fight was over very quickly. I was going to say, <laughs> yeah, that... <laughs> Yeah. Um, and then Nick had had a dream in that apartment that it, it was a really scary dream. And then uh, the way our furniture was set up in that dream, Kendra, not very long afterwards, had re situated our apartment to look like how it was in Nick's dream, but he hadn't told us the dream. So Gosh. when he showed up to our apartment and seen his scary dream basically come to life, he refused to come into the apartment. He didn't want to, he wanted anything to do with it. Oh, jeez. Um, but we, I, I saw black figures in that apartment walking around all the time. Uh, same as Nick, same as Kendra. Kendra and Nick had a situation where they kept hearing each other call each other's names, but neither one of them actually were. And I was at work. Hmm. Um, and then, uh, from that apartment, we moved into my current house, which, um, I'm happy to say is mostly paranormal free. We've been living in this house for, I think this is... Year nine. Nine years? Wow. Oh, geez. Uh, nine years. And uh, we've had a couple of experiences, but nothing on the scale of what I used to live with. Um, yeah. Um, we had we used to have a black lab, and uh, we took her over from my wife's family shortly after moving into this house. And mm-hmm. she had a freak-out moment where she ran into the living room. Just, I've never heard her bark prior to that like that or mm-hmm. after that. Hmm. And um, 
long story short, I came out into the living room and she was just barking at this weird blank at this spot on the wall that there was nothing there. And she was just like a dog in a full blown attack mode, ready to kill it. And I couldn't, I didn't see anything. There was nothing outside. Um, and then after my grandpa Jeff passed away several years ago, we started having activity in our house, uh, voices and things moving on their own and shadows. Uh, but that didn't last long, maybe a couple weeks. Mm -hmm. Um, and then other than that, I can't, I can't really say we have too much that happens in this house. It's probably the most paranormal free I've been in my life is living in this house, but it doesn't go away. Like I can go other places and I can feel it and I can sense it and I can tell like the energy here is different than, than other places. Well, um, when I was at, I mean, cause I've been to your house twice and I never had any sort of weird, really, feelings um about anything i never had anything too weird i mean happened to me there it was it felt fine which you know is as i was expecting there especially with like our family history of weird things happening i was expecting to go there and just have something super off the wall and crazy happen to me mm -hmm. and then both times i was there nothing happened I mean, nothing. It was just very normal. Yeah, I did a podcast last year with mom and um, uh, Brian, the gentleman who came down here back in October, and we did the ghost hunt. All right. And I was telling him, because we were talking about the paranormal and, you know, our different ideas, and I was telling him that I kind of feel like I have, I don't know if it's just years and years of, of going through it or if there's something on the other side. Mm -hmm. I don't know, but I kind of feel like I have this like weird protection shield thing because I every so often I'll get that feeling like there's something around me, mm -hmm. uh, but then it goes away very quickly at the same time. So mm -hmm. it just kind of has this weird vibe of like uh, there's a, a, there must be some kind of attraction to me from the other side, but it can't linger, and I think that's in this house like. They want to linger, but they can't. But they can't. Yeah. That's very interesting. That's yeah. interesting. Yeah. Yeah, so. I, uh, I mean, I never really had anything really super crazy happen to me. Like, like I said, with the, with the, the light or with the bathroom and the door in the apartment. I mean, that's, those are creepy things. Um, or, you know, the breathing in my ear and things like that. But those, I've never had, other than the, the experience in mom's apartment, which was terrifying. But that's really the only, like, major thing I've had happen to me. Um, yeah. And I've been really lucky about that. But with having grown up in a, you know, in a family that's very prone to having things like that happen to them, I hate staying in the house alone. Like I hate being anywhere that's like a bigger space than normally like what my, my apartment was, my efficiency apartment. Mm -hmm. I felt really safe in there. Although I did have that weird iron thing happen to me mm -hmm. just mainly because I think I could see everything. It was all open. Um, right. But even like in our house now, um, there are still times where I'm, I'm, nervous to be alone because I don't know what's going to happen to me. And, you know, 99% of the time it's nothing, nothing ever happens to me, but it still just yeah. makes me just nervous. I can't, I don't sleep anywhere in the dark. And um, I constantly have a light on when, when I'm here. Cause you know, Cody's schedule is so off, but um, when Cody is here. He doesn't like to sleep with any form of lights on or anything. So we have a bathroom across the hallway that I keep the light on and it shines under the door and I can fall asleep if that's on, but I can't fall asleep in total darkness or in any sort of no noise that creeps me out more than anything. 
Mm-hmm. Um, so just growing up in that kind of family just has made me, I guess, anxious paranoid. To, paranoid. Yeah, it's, yeah, it really has. Yeah, I have. Uh, I kind of have the same issues. Like if Kendra and I are home together, um, I can I can do okay because I have the dogs, and the dogs are kind of like your first. Like your first sign exactly. that something's going to be wrong. Right. Um, but sometimes, um, Kendra, Kendra, on top of being a teacher, also works with our city youth. So sometimes she's not home. Uh, right. She has to do overnight with them. And so I'll have the house to myself. And that's probably when I get creeped out the most because now it's just me. Right. And I kind of feel like... I, I would have to see the, say the same as you. I just have that paranoia. Um, and I'll leave the TV on until I wake up and I turn it off. Yeah. And I make sure the dogs are in the room with me. Um, but I think that's, I think you're right. That's kind of like one of the curses of growing up in the family we grew up in is. Right. You're always expecting something to happen. Mm-hmm. Even if you've gone years without anything happening to you, you're always expecting it regardless. Because exactly. Because you never know when it will Yeah, or you'll never know when something will start back up or... Yeah. Yeah. But it was never, it was never so bad as it was in that house in Casa Grande, though. We had so many weird things happen in that house that I, it just constantly felt uneasy. Yeah, I... I Still remember to this day, mom running downstairs. I was watching TV and she was upstairs on the computer and she ran downstairs and she, I had moved my TV and my video game system out of my room and into um, what was at the time the playroom. Right. It it eventually became your room, but um, it was the quote unquote playroom where all the children could go in there and play. Right. So she was hearing movement and people talking in my bedroom and she knew my TV and my video games were no longer in there. And thus I wasn't in there. Right. And I wasn't even upstairs to begin with. I was actually downstairs and she ran downstairs and I don't remember where Jay was at the time. He might've been asleep, but she ran downstairs and she was just like, there's some, there's people talking in your room, blah, blah, blah. And I thought, well, maybe I left my window open. Mm Mm-hmm. And so I go upstairs, and as I get closer to the room, I can hear people talking in my room and movement, oh, like people geez. walking around. And so I grabbed, um, I think I actually had my old uh, my old baseball bat up against the computer desk, and I grabbed it. <laughs> I was like, all right, time to be a hero. <laughs> and I go into the bedroom, and there's nobody there. I, I left my lights on, so there was nobody there. My windows were shut and closed, and... Um, I was like, and I was scared. I was so scared because you could hear it. Like, yeah. you couldn't understand what the voices were saying, but you can hear the movement. You can hear the voices. Like, there were people just feet away from me and somehow in my room. And you walk in there and there's nobody there. And, like, you know, you know deep down there's nobody there, but you can. But the evidence in a that there sense. Is, <laughs> like, in, in a sense, there's people there. Exactly. And uh, yeah. I still like I still remember having to go downstairs and tell mom like uh, there was nobody there. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, she didn't she didn't go up there with you. She made you do, <laughs> she made you do that alone. <laughs> she made me go up there by myself. Come on now, of course uh, she did. Yeah, or oh my god, this was the worst. The worst. She okay. So we would go to bed, and we would go up the stairs. And of course, it was a race, and and. If you had to physically hurt somebody to be the first person at the top of the stairs, you would. Oh, you did it. But, but, this is the best. When you get, when you get to the room and all the lights are fucking off and she says, I forgot my purse. Oh, and you're like, yeah. really? You're like, it is pitch fucking black. And I already just did like an Olympic time sprint up these mm-hmm. stairs. Yep. So I... And you're going to make me go back down there and do it again. You're going to make me go back down there in the dark. Alone. Exactly. Alone. And she was like, Madison, just run, just run. And I'm like, ah, okay. But that doesn't make it any less scary. That in, if, as a matter of fact, makes it scarier. It makes it worse. Cause you're running for your life now. Yeah. Well, <laughs> and it, it really did feel like that. You felt like you had to move fast. So nothing happened. 
Yeah. Um, and finally, I was just like, why can your purse not just stay in the living room? And she would say, well, if somebody breaks into the house, I don't want them to steal my purse. And you know what's really funny about that? Huh. Is I now have that logic. I don't keep my purse normally at least closer to the front door. Like we have a kitchen table that's around. When you first walk in, you go to the right, there's a kitchen table. I'll set uh-huh. my purse in like a chair or something, but I don't keep it in plain view of the front door in case somebody breaks into my house and steals my purse. And so I, I mean, I get it now, but when you're going to bed, just, just remember your freaking purse. Just remember it. Just or take it wallet. up with you. Wallet or wallet. Or purse. Just take it with you. Yeah, and so she, oh, I, fro- I just fucking hate, because when you're when you're standing at the top of the stairs and you were looking downstairs, it was pitch black. Mm-hmm. I mean, you can't see anything, so you've got to run down the stairs, flick lights on, grab her bag, flick lights off, which was the worst. Running up the stairs when the, when the bottom was like dark. always felt like somebody was following you up the stairs every oh, single my, time. Every, every time. Yeah. It, that house was yeah. just a nightmare it was so bad one of my weaknesses is um anytime i eat pizza i get really thirsty in the middle of the night and <laughs> so i would go through these thirsty spells and for me now it doesn't it's not that bad right but living in a two-story house when you're the furthest room across the yeah. floor on the two-story right you have to go all the way across the the second story to the stairs, then all the way downstairs to the kitchen just to get something to drink. Yeah, at some point at you just got to think, two how o'clock thirsty. in the morning. Yeah. Yeah. Well, most of the time I would say I'm not thirsty enough and I just try to drink. Exactly. Sleep. Yeah, I'm not that thirsty. But when you know you're thirsty enough, you're like, damn it. I know. And yep. to this day, one of the most frightening things that ever happened to me wasn't even paranormal. <laughs> I went downstairs what? and got something to drink, started back up the stairs. And this little shadow peeks around the corner and goes, Jory, what are you doing? And I went into flight or fight mode, fell back <laughs> off the stairs, put my fisticuffs up, and it was you. <laughs> and I was like, oh, my gosh. Because like, we knew the house was haunted. So to right. see this little shadow figure appear out of nowhere and say my name, I was like, I guess it's time to fight. I was going to say, were you getting ready to box the fucking ghost? <laughs> Well, I was like, it, it, it's just instinctual. Like it's fight or flight. And the first yeah. thing my brain did was take a step back and get ready to fight. Cause you know, it's two o'clock in the morning. I'm just in like pants and some socks and maybe right. a shirt. Yeah. The, my first thought isn't to leave the house. My first thought is I have to defend myself. Yeah. And, you, that's, uh, see, my, <laughs> my first thought, especially like, And maybe that was one of the things I really loved about living in my apartment was I was a straight shot to the door. So if anything happened to me, my first instinct was to get out. Right. And apparently that was my first instinct in mom's apartment as well, because I, there is literal, literally just like a space of time that's just missing. I don't remember being in her, like, I remember being in her room and the door shutting, but I don't remember how I got out. I don't remember getting out. I just, my brain just was like too much going on at one time. And so it was like, we're just going to shut down. But luckily my body worked and got me the hell out of there. And just, it was just, you know, it was one of those things that are just like so traumatizing that you just lose like chunks of time. Yeah. That must've been one of those. Cause next thing I knew I was on the phone with mom, like freaking out. Where the hell are you? Right. She, she's like, we're leaving, we're leaving, we're coming home. And I was like, okay, but I'm not going back into the apartment until you come home. Right. Yeah, that, yeah that's, that's definitely creepy. Yeah. Not, just not, not a good feeling. <laughs> <laughs> it's, it's just, it's not. It's... Well, okay. uh, um, on that note, is there any other paranormal topics on top of your brain or maybe uh maybe jeremy if uh he's had anything weird happen to him like i know you heard the growl noise when mom had her weird choking event um wait what remember when mom mom had that choking event where she like maya and jeremy dropped her off and 
And they had to come back. They had to come back for her. And while Jeremy was on the phone with mom, he heard a growl on her oh, phone. Oh, geez. Yeah. I remember. Yeah. She, she, she called me or she made it maybe texted me that day and she said, Hey, um, something happened, but I can't tell you. And I was like, <laughs> well, what, what? And she was like, I, I can't talk to you about it. I can't. And I said, well, then, you know, don't, don't bring it up. <laughs> exactly. And she eventually was like, okay, so I'm going to talk to you. I'm going to tell you what happened, but this is, it's, it's just the one time. Right. And I, and I said, okay. And she's like, I feel like I can't talk about it or that's just giving it energy. And I said, okay, that's fine. And so she told me what happened and, um, she said it felt like she was not being choked, but choking. Yeah. And like something like, like her throat was closing or something like that. That's what, yeah. And she said, it didn't, she said, I didn't feel like something was physically like around my neck choking me. She said, but I could, it felt like something was in my throat. Mm hmm. And I said, well, that's weird. And she said, it brought me to my knees. I couldn't breathe. And she said, by yeah. the grace of God, I made it um, to the phone. And I was able to call Maya and Jeremy. And I said, well, yeah. I mean, that's... But she said it just happened. She came back from a doctor's appointment or something. And she said it happened to her as soon as she came in the house. Something happened to her. And that's, and that's what I was saying. Is she always gets like the physical really abrasive, angry things. Um, and luckily, thank God, you know, I haven't had anything like that happen to me. And so, cause that's one of the things I was always worried about is, is moving out as I thought, are these things going to happen to me mm-hmm. when I move out and I live on my own and what, what am I going to do? And Luckily, it hasn't. Yet. Oh, don't, don't. <laughs> <laughs> Cody still hasn't come home for like another 10 days. Don't do that to me. <laughs> Gosh, dang. <sighs> I can't. You're such a jerk. I apologize. And but it's, it's so fun to taunt you. I but, just... Um, oh, go yeah. ahead. I was, I was just, with my anxiety, I, I just... And constantly anxious about things like that happening. And I don't know what I would, I don't know what I would do. Because I know that if something weird happened to me, I wouldn't want to, I wouldn't be able to stay in the house alone. Like I can now because nothing weird ever happens to me and everything feels fine. Mm -hmm. Um, But if things like that started happening to me, I just, I don't, I don't know. And my, and it's, it's, you know, mom always says that she's gotten to the point where she's just kind of like, she doesn't pay attention to it. Yeah. And how do you get to that point? <laughs> how are you just like, oh, yeah, I'm just not going to, I'm just not. Um, well, I know just from my experiences, you just, it's not so much you don't pay attention to it as you just get used to it. And so when something happens, like, yeah, it kind of freaks you out for a second, but then you're just kind of like, oh, that happened. Like, um, when, um, when my grandfather passed away and Kendra and I started experiencing weird stuff for a little while, the first thing that happened was I was showering and this black figure walked, uh, in front of my shower door. And so... I thought, okay, well, maybe it was just a shadow of a bird flying by. Because I said, there is a window in my bathroom that isn't covered. Uh So I just kind of shrugged it off, whatever. And then I started hearing the voices again. And Kendra had objects moving on her from here and there. And instead of being like, holy crap, that's scary. I was just like, oh, okay. (laughs) Like, this is happening now. And that was yeah. it. Like, I just moved, like, I mean, you just kind of, like, it's there and you're scared, but at the same time, you're kind of just like, oh, okay, great, more more fun. Yeah, I, I apparently have just not gotten to that point yet. <laughs> I, I, mm-mm. I just don't feel like, I don't know how you just get to the point where it's kind of just something that you live with 
you know, every day where you get to the point where you're not as scared as you, I guess, used to be. And you're just like, oh, okay, well, you know, like you said, this is happening again. But then again, I, I haven't, you know, you've had more things happen to you than I've had happen to me. So maybe, I don't know, maybe it's just, I just haven't had enough happen to me yet. I just, uh, I don't know, it's hard to explain. You just kind of, um, I mean, you kind of walk around with this, with, you know, also with the fact that, like, dad was a skeptic for many years, so it was hard oh, to talk yeah. about because he wouldn't believe you. I mean, he would right. believe that you were experiencing something, but he didn't believe it. Right. Um, and then I don't know about you, Jeremy, what anything that you've experienced in your life, but I imagine that coming into our family... And hearing all the crazy stuff that we've been through, if maybe you, I don't know if you're a believer or non-believer, but I'm sure that's like a big bowl of cereal to take in. Yeah, I'm so sure. It's kind of one of those weird things where you kind of have to carry it around by yourself until mm -hmm. somebody, somebody else starts believing in it with you. Uh, and then you kind of just get to a point where you've built up a, uh, a wall or a tolerant a tolerance if that mm -hmm. right and so um it's been easier now for the past several years with my wife and i living in this house currently where we don't get so much attention from uh the other side but it, when i do i it doesn't like i notice it i sense it i feel it I acknowledge it, and then it's just kind of like, okay, well, I, I, I've got, I've got stuff to do. So yeah, either yeah. tell me what the hell you want now, or get out of my way. So yeah, well, at least you know in the house you're living in now, there hasn't been quite, quite as much. Uh yeah. I mean, there is a part of me, and it's weird to say it, but there's a part of me that kind of misses it because it kind of keeps things interesting. Um, right. But for the most part, I, I do still, I, I can walk out the door and experience, like, you know, I could go to mom's house like I did in July and be like, oh, something's not right with that room. Right. So it's not something that's ever gone away. It's not something that will ever go away. Um, and, you know, like, I, you know, with my family member passing away a couple of years ago, he made sure to, to be like, hey, um, just let you know I'm leaving. And here's a couple of, uh, here's a couple of little nasty surprises for you. <laughs> so um, while I do miss the, I don't know if I want to say the adrenaline of the constant experiences. Right. Um, it's nice that there's kind of a calm now and my right. wife and I can go to sleep without too much worry and especially now that we've got the little baby boy on the way um, it's going to be nice to know that I'm not going to I'm not going to be able to turn the baby monitor on and hear some witch hag singing to him which <laughs> <laughs> oh, well sucks. I mean I mean my mom my mom and my mother-in-law will be here, so I might still hear some cackling, but... Oh, my God. Uh, <laughs> hey, Jeremy, let's edit that last part out. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah, make sure she doesn't hear that. <laughs> make sure she doesn't hear that. <laughs> Both of them. Yeah. But uh, um, it's nice to know that the house has got a nice, calm center where we can live our lives and not have too much interruption in the, in the bubble. When we put ourselves out there in the world, it's a different story. Like Kendra and I have stayed at the most haunted locations you can think of. And, and when we're in those situations, I expect it, but at home, it's nice Ooh. to be able to not expect it. More. Well, yeah. And I think that's the thing is when you go to, you know, your, your haunted places, you're, you try to do the, the best that you can to prepare yourself. So when it happens, you're not, as shocked but when it happens when you're at home and you're least expecting it that is part of the frightening aspect is that you weren't prepared right and so like you said when it comes to your fight or flight instinct sometimes what your body does is it just that's its defense mechanism and i'm weird i don't know why i don't 
just run. Like I'm like, all right, time to fight. <laughs> my my fight or flight just goes directly to flight. Just get out. <laughs> like well, an... I did have an experience where um, I've told the story before, but essentially there used to be this abandoned church that everybody said was haunted, and, and we would go there. Um, me and my friends, and we would uh, um, just see if it was. And I've told about my experiences with the church there. And I, we, uh, me and a good buddy of mine and his wife walked into the church, and in the corner was this giant bee's nest, or I thought was a bee's nest at the time. Um, it could have been flies. But all I heard was this buzzing sound. And when you see like a large congregation of these flying insects, um, you, you think automatically like a demonic haunting. And so I right. just turned around and I said, bye. And I see ya. And I left them in the church. Uh, oh my God. <laughs> just run it off into the desert like you're on your own. <laughs> hey, sometimes, yeah, when you know something's bad, you just got to go. Just go. <laughs> it's time to go. go yeah. On. Yeah. Well, Hello. More often than not, I tend to have instances where I spend more time trying to fight when I'm scared rather than just getting the hell out of the situation. Yeah. I, I didn't inherit that. I did not get that. I just like, I don't know. I would just rather not, not deal with it. I'd rather just not have to, like I said, if just not deal with it, if something weird's happened in the house, get, get me out, let's move. I don't want to, don't want to deal with it. And there was right. there was the time where after mom when she got when she got scratched, uh, and it started bleeding. Dad was like, "We've we've got to look for places to to move." He's like, "We can't stay here." Mm-hmm. And and you know, shortly after we ended up we ended up moving, but that one was just a weird one. I had never seen anything like that because it just she would just said, "I'm burning." I'm like, "Okay, well you're wearing a sweatshirt, you know." take it off. Right. And she's yeah. like, no, like something is physically burning. And I'm like, Oh, Oh no. <laughs> this just, just sounds right. bad. <laughs> like, right. And it was weird. Cause you know, like I said, it wasn't anything that one of the dogs could have scratched her or she could have ended up scratching herself. Cause she was wearing two different layers of clothing. Right. And, and at that point you have to think, okay, something went out of its way to cause you this discomfort in this, pain and and that's when dad was like we we gotta go right because that just seems like a lot of energy it seems like a lot of energy for for something like that to happen and why was it taking that energy to do that exactly so i remember there was there was a time when we lived in casa grande and uh one of the girls that lived across the park in that little cul-de-sac area. Mm -hmm. uh, we were at her house and she brought out uh, a Ouija board and I, I had never heard of it. I didn't know what it was. And I came home and I was telling mom about it and I called it an Alja. And she was like, you are not allowed to go over to that house anymore. <laughs> and I was like, okay, well, why? And she's like, you're not supposed to play with that. And she goes, if you, she goes, if I let you back over at that house, if some, if she goes ahead and plays that game again, you have to leave. Mm -hmm. And I said, okay. And she never, like, there was never any explanation. It was just a stern, you cannot play that. Mm -hmm. And then, of course, as I got older, I learned about it. And I thought, wow, that's, you know, and it's just something they sell. Just, they sell it. I don't think, it's either Walmart or Target that doesn't sell them anymore. But you can you can get them at either one, or you can go like our local bookstore has them. Mm -hmm. um, Spirit Halloween sells them around Halloween, and so I just it's something just so easily accessible, but it's so dangerous. Depending on the person, I suppose. I guess if you don't believe in things like that, then it's really nothing. But you know, like I grew up in a family where I know not, not to like even go within a ten foot radius. 
Well, I've always been a believer of, once I've done more research into it, I've always been a believer that it's not necessarily the Ouija board. It's the, the Ouija board is a tool. The people, right. the people involved with it are feeding the energy into the environment, which exactly. allows whatever it needs to come through to come through. Right. So it doesn't have to be an Ouija board. Like, honestly, you could just sit in your room and day in and day out, keep calling out to something, um, sending out your energy into the universe or whatever. Well, you know, and, and people, something will eventually find its way to you. Exactly. You know, and people do that all the time. They do their little seances with their candles and their pentagrams and whatever. And so it doesn't necessarily have to be a Ouija board, but that is one of the more common things that people use as a Correct. tool to, so it's true. It yeah. is. It's just mainly your energy. And if you're looking for something, it'll, it'll find you. Mm hmm. It will find you. And, and we and it, know that all too well. Well, and that's the thing is, you know, when people when people do those things and they think that they're trying to reach a loved one who's recently passed and it doesn't, what comes to you isn't your loved one. It's just, like I said, it's just the energy. Whatever can grasp onto that and make its way out here will. Mm -hmm. And it'll do what it has to, you know, and that's just... That's the, that's the scary thing is you just never know in situations like that what you're bringing, you know, what you're inviting into your home or what's going to follow you. You know, it, it, it's not even necessarily your home. You can move from home to home to home and it's, it's attached to you. It will find you. It'll go with you. Right. And that's the scary thing is it's not like, a, oh, you know, we're going to move and our problem's going to be solved. It's sometimes they, they don't. And that's like one of the things with mom is like, can, no matter where we are, something's happening. Yep. So just one of those, you just have to be careful. I mean, be careful what you play with is essentially the, uh, the theme of today's podcast. Pretty much. Pretty much. Yep. Be careful what you ask for. Be careful. What you use for asking for it. Yep. We are a testament to that. That's true. Yep. <laughs> That's true. And you know, and it's it's so funny because I'll talk to Cody about things like that, and he's just so he's never had anything really ever weird happen to him. So he's like, Oh yeah. Yeah. And I'm like these are real things. These are real things. And it's weird to me how people can just blow it off. Like, oh, this isn't, you know, oh, ghosts, those aren't real, whatever. And I'm like, really? Like, these are real things. How can you not? And so I'm always afraid that one day that something's going to happen to me. And, of course, Cody's going to be here. And I'm going to be like, well, I told you. Well, <clears throat> I just recently had a very, very deep, long talk with a friend of mine. And he's never had anything happen to him paranormal wise, ever, nothing. But he believes that it can happen based off of like stories that I've told him. He was like, I don't really usually take people to face value on what they say to me, but he's like, I've known you for years, we're really good friends, and I believe you have no reason to lie to me. So I believe these things could happen, but I've never had them happen to me. Right. And so he's he believes but he's also a skeptic to a point because how can it's, you how can you 100 percent believe in something you've never really experienced it for yourself right right so i can, I can understand cody's skepticism it's the same thing as dad dad like, yeah. does not believe in ghosts like we would tell him all the time this stuff is happening to us and he was like okay and because it wasn't <laughs> yeah. happening to him yeah so when he, in the second story house, watched that figure walk downstairs, turn the corner, and walk into his bathroom, he shot up off the couch, ran over, saw that no one was in the house, and it was, I mean, it was probably the most eye-opening experience he's ever had in his life. Yeah, because I remember you guys saying that Dad was like, holy shit. Yeah. Like, freaking he, out. He finally had to look all of us in the eye and say, I'm sorry I ever doubted you. Yeah. So there might be a day where something happens to you and, or even to Cody. And Cody has to say, you're right. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Maybe. 
So yep. maybe, and, you know, maybe that won't ever happen. And maybe, you know, luckily the rest of my life, I'll just have very minimal things happen to me and we won't ever get to that place. But if hopefully if anything ever does happen to me, it's not while I'm home alone on the two, <laughs> the two weeks that he's gone. Cause I'm just going to have to find somewhere to stay until he gets home. <laughs> and it's, it's not going to be mom's house. Oh, come on, Madison. Live a little bit. Oh, mm, 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 mm. <laughs> no, that's, that's a little too much, too much, too much, too much More living than, for you. Yeah. That's yeah. More than I bargained for. <laughs> Wait, and it's, it's, uh, her house is just so, so creepy. Just, I mean, you can even be there with a house full of people and you're like, it is just weird. Mm-hmm. So. <sighs> well, is there uh, anything else you feel like uh, that's tickling your brain or? No, not, not necessarily. It was, this was so last minute that I really didn't have a lot of time to do research on really anything. Yeah, we wanted to, I know I was bouncing a couple ideas off of you, and unfortunately, with everything being so last minute, we kind of just settled on doing this small little discussion. Um, so maybe in the future, if we get better heads up, <laughs> right? Yeah, we can do an, an actual like real good topic for everybody to uh, get in on and uh, and participate with, um, and obviously everybody can participate in this through, uh, the chat will be up after Jeremy posts this and you guys right. can, you guys can post whatever you want to post. And if we can get back to you, we'll get back to you. Um, yeah, well, we'll have to all just collectively decide on something and do some research and get together and, and do something that we've, you know, had time to put together and, well, I know a small, well, it's not really a small project. It's a big, big project that we've been working on behind the scenes. And I know everybody wants to talk about it. It's just been really difficult to get to is uh, mm -hmm. talking about Alistair Crowley. Right. And it was a subject that was originally going to be talked about with Exit Light and Rob. Um, but that has been moved to uh, myself and, and Exit Light. Uh, but the project's been so big to undertake that we, we just keep postponing and postponing and postponing. Right. Um, so I know we're going to get around to that for you guys. Uh, we got a bunch of other ideas that we're still working on. In a couple months, we'll actually be coming up on the one-year anniversary of the podcast. So that's going to be fun. That's exciting. I'm assuming uh, Exit Light will have some uh, ideas for that as well. Oh, I'm sure. Um, so I'll, I guess I'll do the shtick for Mom since she's not here. Um, <laughs> For all of you who enjoyed the podcast, give it a thumbs up. If you don't like the podcast, still give it a thumbs up because it helps her out regardless. Um, Mom does original stories on here. Uh, so, you know, pass the word along the Exit Light channel. She doesn't go off of Reddit. She doesn't go off of any other sites. She does her own stories. Uh, she tries to do weekly podcasts with uh, myself or her UK co-host, Rob. Um, Madison is also an occasional guest. Uh, usually she just has relatives, uh, part of the show. Right. <laughs> That's okay. Um, but you know, we, we spice it up a little bit. Diabolical witness, Brian, uh, we've had him on the show a couple times. Um, and we, we talk about a range of subjects from the paranormal to conspiracy theories to, um, uh, they love they love to do the national park stories, uh, serial killers. Uh, they they kind of just cover the wide range of all the weird and crazy things that happen in our world. So um, stay tuned for all of that. Um, if you would like to donate to Exit Lights Patreon, um, she has all those uh, services uh, attached to her YouTube channel and her Facebook page. I think uh, Jeremy might even attach all that information when this goes up. Um, and then, uh, Exit Lights UK co-host Rob, he has his own Facebook page called Paranormal Supernatural World. You can look that up through the Exit Light Facebook page, or I guess you could just look that up on Facebook. Um, so go and check that out. And, um, I think that pretty much covers all that shtick. 
I think so. So right. unless anybody has anything else they want to add, I guess we can go ahead and call this. And uh, once again, uh, feel free to chat while listening to this recording. Um, if you have any questions, I'm sure mom will scour through all of it and we'll try and we'll try and get back to you on all of that. Um, but in the meantime, I think uh, I think we're gonna call it. Yeah, I think so. So, right. uh, Madison, thanks for uh, jumping in and giving your big brother a hand today. Not a problem. Um, and big thanks to uh, producer Jeremy for helping out today as well. Thank you, Jeremy. Um, and uh, with that, I will say good night, everybody. And uh, once again, take Madison's advice and sleep with the lights on. <laughs> <laughs> Bye. Right. Bye. Bye.